Hi, my name is Paul Daybaugh. I'm from Niagara College in Welland, Ontario, Canada. Today I'm going to show you how to use the pen tool that is found in almost all the Adobe products. So whether you're using Photoshop like I'm going to be using today, Illustrator, InDesign, they all have a pen tool. The first thing I'm going to do though is start on a blank page just to show you how the tool works. So the pen tool is over here. There's a number of them but you can work back and forth uh, between them but I'm only going to use this one one, just the pen tool. So the idea of the pen tool is that you click and drag a point. Now a single point will not give you a curve, but two points will. And then I click and drag down and you can see that I'm now controlling the points. If I keep going, it will keep curving. For me to go in a backward direction, I would need to change the point. So there's gonna be a lot of me telling you to hold down different keys on the keyboard. I'm working on a Mac today, so I'm gonna tell you the Mac one, but you uh, would have to convert, I think option becomes Alt and stuff like that. So it's not that difficult, it's just a, a slight conversion. I'm over top of this point right here, and when I click the, op hold down the option key, you can see that I get like kind of like a little, um, arrow symbol next to my pen. And when I click, and then you'll notice that one of the tangents disappeared. And now when I go back in another direction, I've got a point that I'm working with. So if I want to keep going, I can, I can do this. Now let's say I wanted to go back and make some corrections. I want to correct this point. I've got the pen tool. If I go over here, you'll notice there's a negative symbol next to it. If I go here, there's a plus symbol. Plus symbol will add points this will remove points. To uh, do some work at the points though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the command key, which is the key next to the, to the uh, shift or the space bar on the keyboard. And when I hold down the command key, it gives me this pointer and it allows me to now move things where I want. So I can move this point or I can shape this point. You can see that there is two there that I, I want to shape. Okay, so let's say I don't want that point. I just click it, click a point in, and then I can move that shape. So that is the basics of the pen tool, um, different points and stuff. Now to finish up this, what I would do is I would use my pointer. I would click here once, and then I would click here. Now I probably would hold down my option key as I clicked, and that way I've got this, this shape and it's a closed in pathway. All right, like, let me now get rid of that um, and I will go to this one. So first we need to zoom in and zoom out. I'm gonna hold down the space bar and then the command key and you'll see I get the plus. Now if I roll towards the bottom left of the screen, it gets smaller towards the top right of the screen, it gets larger. If I wanna move that around now, I let go of all the all of the keys and hold down just the space bar and I can click and drag to where I want it to be. So I'm gonna start here and I want the curve to go here, of course. So I'm gonna click and drag towards where the curve goes like that. And then I'm gonna go up here and click drag away from it so I can finish it. And you'll see now that I can hold down my command key and I can control this line through these two tangents. There we go. So I'm gonna pull this down now. Now I wanna go a new direction here. So I'm gonna hold down the option key and, and you'll see that right next to my arrow here, you'll see it turning from that minus sign into that little arrow, which means that I'm now gonna go in another direction. So I'm gonna click here and drag all the way along. And if I wanna go back, I can, but really I think I could probably do it right from here. So I'll just get that curve correct. If I need to change it a little bit, I can I can hold down my command key. I get that arrow and I can change it right here. So I can kind of reshape that. I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna put, making sure that this is highlighted because I'm gonna go from this, from that point. I'm gonna drag like this. So there we go. I'm a little outside here. You can see I'm a little off. So I'm gonna hold down the command key and shape this. I'm holding the command key, I'm clicking the end of the tangent here, and I'm just reshaping. So I can keep shaping until I get that the way I want it to be. I'm going to move this over a little bit. I got a new direction to go to, so I'm going to hold down the option key, click on here, gets rid of that one tangent you can see, 
and it allows me to go in a different direction. Again here, I'm gonna hold down option key and click, and I'm gonna go over here, and it allowed me to go in a new direction. So now I can shape this to the way I want it to be shaped. Okay, if I'm not comfortable, if I, like I, I might need to go to this one. So I'm gonna hold down the command key, click and drag that one. And I have a little more control over some other portion. I'm a little off here, but I think I'll, I think I'll be okay with that. All right, I'm gonna move this up. I'm holding down the shift bar while I move. I'm gonna go in a different direction here again. I'm gonna click down on the option key, hold that. I will go over here. I'm gonna do this in a couple steps just to show it show you it being done. Um, now I'm really dragging this out here because it is quite a long curve. I'm going to pull this down and take a look at it. Uh, that's pretty good. But if I wanted to change it again, command key, and then I can control this one, um, maybe pull this one in a little bit because maybe my curve is a little too big. So I'm close there. I'm going to continue on here. Um, wow, this is too much, right? So I need to pull this one back. Be aware though that you're controlling the curve on the other side, so you gotta be really careful what you're doing there. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna make sure that this is highlighted so that as I continue to draw, I'm continue on, on that curve. I could probably do this in uh, less points, but just to show you it happening. Sorry. I have a point here that I, that's the end point. But this is the one I wanna deal with right here. Pull this out a bit. And again, I have to be aware of what I'm doing down here. I've gone off the line a little bit here. So I might want to click on this one and then pull this one back. So a little bit of playing around here. Command Z to get rid of that. Get back here, click hold. So the command key gives you that arrow, which is kind of an, uh, the ability to be able to select and, and do things with it without creating new points and stuff. So I'm going to click up here. I'm just going to click on this one. Um, I'm going to hold down the command key or the option key. I'm sorry. I'm holding down the option key right now. And did I get in the next, next direction? Nope. So I'm going to go undo command Z. I'm going to click here. Click here. See? I need to click on this first. You can't just hold the option key down. You gotta click on that point to say I'm going in a new direction. You can see that I'm going in a new direction here. I'm gonna put this over here. And then I wanna go straight down. So I'm gonna probably make a new direction here. And then I'm gonna hold down the option key while I click here. And I've now completed my pathway. You can see if I hold it here, I got a pathway. I can undo, bring that back. So, um, sorry, um, I'm going to zoom this out. I've got a pathway selected. The next thing I'm going to do is do actually make this into a path. You can see over here, I've got path. I've gone under photography. I'll reset to photography. Uh, there's my photography one. I've got pathway here. Now, if I use the pen tool, it automatically makes a work path. So all I'm really doing is saving a path. So you can see, I'm going to save my path. And I can call it a uh, tea cup. Now, it'll, most of the time I just save it as path one, path two, but just sure you can save it. So now I have the tea cup path. The next thing I wanna uh, show you um, is that you wanna make a clipping path. So you're gonna click here and you go to clipping path. Now, um, I'm gonna go uh, 0.5 in flatness. It, all that does is if you have a lot of points and a lot of curve, it just flattens everything out just a little tiny bit. Um, now, right now, if I save this um, as a JPEG, um, it will be fine. I normally would save this as a Photoshop file. And when I bring it into InDesign, the background will disappear because it has a clipping path on it. So that's got a clipping path. The last thing I want to do is show you how do you make a transparency out of this. Um, so what I'm going to do is, it, it, this is um, a, a, a bit tricky, um, but I'm going to go into... A pathway here I'm gonna say make the selection and you can see it comes up and it says feather and if I feather just gives you a bit of a, a little tiny bit of a fuzz on the edge so you could do like a one if you wanted so you can see it's feathered it's it's grabbed the edge and it's now marching around there that's it, it's a selection 
Um, I need to get into a layer though. So now I've got that selected. I'm going to go here to background and I'm simply going to duplicate the background layer. Duplicate the background layer. And you can call it whatever. I can call this transparent layer. You can see that I've got a layer and I am going to unselect so that I hide the background layer. I know this seems weird, but this is how you got to get the transparency. Hide the background layer. Now, right now, if I delete, you can see that I'm deleting the cup. I don't want to delete the cup. What I want to do is I want everything that's not selected. So I'm going to go under selecting and say inverse the selection. So now I've got everything outside of it. And all I have to do is hit the big delete button, which is the backspace on most keyboards, but on a Mac, it's a delete button. And there it is. Um, there's my transparency. Now, all I have to do is if I want to stop that marching around, I can just say Command D, which is deselect. And now I can just export this as a ping or I can save it as a PNG. Um, and then that will come into a browser um, like that. Okay, so I can save it as a PNG and that should be fine. So what I'll do is I'm going to uh, save this out. I'm going to export this as, as a PNG. I'm going to put that on my desktop. So I'll call it teacup and uh, underscore trans. Parent. I could call it teacup clip. That's normally what I call it, but that's fine. So there's my transparent. So there you go. That's how you create a transparency um, and how to use the pen tool in Photoshop. I hope that helps. I'm Paul Dayball, Negra College. <laughs>